Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to give folks a minute to pile in here. All right, it looks like we have critical mass um, of folks who are in the waiting room. So my name is Lindsay Riley. I'm with the Maryland Democratic Party. Um, good morning. Thank you for taking the time to join us today for our press call following bombshell reporting from Time Magazine that Larry Hogan directed millions of taxpayer dollars to his own clients. So we have some great speakers lined up to talk about this. Um, we have Maryland Comptroller Brooke Lehrman, former Attorney General Brian Frosch, and Congressman Jamie Raskin. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to um, Comptroller Learman. Can you kick us off? Oh, Comptroller, I think you're muted. It's all good. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, thanks for bringing us together today. Um, it's always great to be with our former Attorney General, Brian Frosch, um, and Congressman Raskin. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to start by just talking a little bit about um, Maryland's ethics laws. Um, as both a member of the Board of Public Works now and the former chair of the Land Use and Ethics Subcommittee, um, you know, Maryland has strict and really well-articulated rules around conflicts of interest that govern the activities of state officials and employees. And it's important to remember that these laws are in place to avoid the improper influence or even the appearance of improper influence. Um, and that's actually a quote from our State Ethics Commission. And as someone now who serves on the Board of Public Works, I have to read, reading this article really startled me. Um, I was very surprised to see that former Governor Hogan uh, failed to recuse himself from matters that we now know um, directly benefited his business partners and his business. Um, in my experience, when there's any question around a potential conflict of interest or even the appearance of one, I seek guidance from state ethics and I follow their recommendations. Um, so today's reporting, um, from what I've read, you know, found that during the former governor's eight years in office, nearly 40% of the competitive affordable housing awards overseen and approved, um, often approved by the Board of Public Works, went to developers who were listed as clients on um, the Hogan Group's website. And of course, we know um, from the reporting that former Governor Hogan voted on five occasions to issue additional loans or grants to four of those same developers. And I think it's just, you know, it's so essential that we are transparent in our decisions, that we ensure that the public know about um, any potential um, improper influence, um, or that we do our best to remove the appearance of any improper influence, um, because no elected official should ever make money off of decisions that they oversee. Um, so I think that there is there are clear questions about um, real serious conflict of interests here and ethical violations. Um, and so I was very surprised and startled to, to see this um, and frankly, very disappointed. And I'll turn it over to our former attorney general now. Thank you, Comptroller. Pleasure to be here with you and with uh, Congressman Raskin. And uh, thank you, Lindsay, for inviting me. Um, Look, Marilyn showered the clients of Larry Hogan's businesses with, with millions of dollars while he was governor. And worse, uh, Larry Hogan personally voted to approve those subsidies. Worse even than that, Hogan didn't tell anyone that his clients were receiving those benefits. These are conflicts of interest that are specifically prohibited by Maryland law. In addition, the ownership interest that Larry Hogan's brother had in these businesses created a conflict of interest for Governor Hogan, and um, uh, Governor Hogan needed to disclose that, and he needed to recuse himself, or he could have just recused himself without uh, disclosing the underlying facts. 
In addition to those uh, two things, Governor Hogan's supervisory authority over the Department of Housing and Community Development creates a conflict under Maryland law for him as well, since they were involved in the approval. And I saw this morning that uh, Hogan issued a press statement claiming that the Ethics Commission exempted him from these provisions. And that's flat wrong. First of all, I don't believe that the Ethics Commission has the power to do that. But more to the point, the Ethics uh, Commission specifically admonished him as follows. The governor should not personally participate in any matter that may come before him or any state agency that involves the businesses or any matter in which he or any of his qualifying relatives or a company that employs them have an interest. So they specifically said to Governor Hogan, you can't do anything that will excuse you from voting on, you're not allowed to vote on issues that affect you, that affect your brother or your interests in companies that may benefit from the issues you're voting. Um, at a bare minimum, as Comptroller Learman said, these appear to be conflicts of interest. That would have required recusal uh, or disclosure. Uh, he did neither. And uh, I note that this morning, uh, the reporter for Time Magazine issued a statement saying that the clients of uh, the Hogan businesses received $90.3 million. And these, these clients were listed on the website of the Hogan companies. So it would be very hard for Governor Hogan to claim that he didn't know about the relationship that his firms had uh, with these clients. Uh, let me also point out that there are a series of troubling coincidences. Um, the Time Magazine article also points out that Governor Hogan made more than $2.4 million in his first couple of years uh, in office. That's an extraordinary amount for anybody, but for somebody who as governor is making $175,000, $180,000 a year, that's really something to, to earn more than a million dollars a year on top of that. Um, secondly, as Washington Monthly Magazine wrote a couple of years ago, state infrastructure, and I'm talking about roads and exchanges uh, and, and things like that, were rerouted in Governor Hogan's first couple of years to the benefit of property and projects that Larry Hogan and his brother had interest in and owned. And then, of course, you know, you've got the reporting today that shows that 40% of the uh, assisted housing subsidies went to clients of the Hogan companies. That's an astonishing figure. And as I said, it amounts to over $90 million. And these are supposedly competitive grants. I guess I'll just note, uh, finally, the last paragraph of the article uh, quotes the statement on the Hogan webpage that says, if you want to determine the best strategy for taking your property through the governmental entitlement process, as well as achieve the best development potential and highest return on your investment, you only need to turn to Hogan. I don't know you know, whether they were trading off of that or how hard they were trading off of that when Larry Hogan was governor. But all of this creates serious questions, questions that Governor Hogan needs to answer. He needs to be fully open with his uh, income, with his financial statements and his tax returns. Uh, these are very, very troubling allegations and he needs to respond to them. Thank Let me you. Turn it over to Congressman Raskin. You're muted, Jamie.
Thank you very much to um, the former Attorney General and uh, to Brooke Learman. Um, they they have very much spoken for me and my reactions. I just want to uh, restate that this is uh, uh, a really shocking and dumbfounding um, set of um, findings here related to conflicts of interest. Um, and it, it leaves me with a, a whole host of questions. Um, uh, I take it that that the former Governor Hogan did not um, issue any kind of statement at the time that he voted on the award of these contracts. Um, and I'm wondering, did he receive any ethical guidance saying that there was no conflict? I would love to see if he would publish any um, opinions that he had, because it's such a glaring conflict of interest to be voting on contracts that go to benefit um, clients that uh, you have and that you're currently benefiting from. Again, as I understand it, he never divested himself from the Hogan business, but maintained a 50% ownership in it, which means that he would have been benefiting directly from uh, contract awards that went to clients of the company that he was still um, a 50% owner in. And so I'm just curious as to whether um, it just never occurred to him that this was a conflict of interest or whether he was told it was not a conflict of interest. And I think he should, um, he should publish whatever the history was of making the decision to participate both in the supervision of uh, government employees who are working on these questions, but also to participate in voting uh, upon them. Um, it was also um, an eye-popping uh, experience to see that the governor had earned $2.4 million while he was governor. Uh, he took in money that dwarfed his salary. Um, was this money related precisely to this series of uh, transactions and awards? Did that $2.4 million come from something else entirely? Or did it come from um, his work with the Hogan Company and the business that they were able to get? Um, I found it stunning that um, these six companies uh, competed against 60 other companies and yet collected 40 percent of the um, uh public housing contract awards. Uh, that's an astonishingly uh, successful and effective performance by these six companies. I would be fascinated to know whether this was a sudden and emerging success of these companies or whether they had been dominant in the field for a long time. Um, so uh, collecting 40% of the overall award in an extremely competitive field like that is really something. I wonder what um, the their disappointed competitors have to say about this situation. I mean, one of the reason that one of the reasons that we have conflict of interest laws is so that we can have a fair competition in a situation like this. And it's simply not fair to the other 60 competitors if you have someone as influential as the governor participating in uh, a proceeding like that and voting on it at the Board of Public Works, um, if he secretly has um, favorites in the contest because of an interest he's got. That's the whole reason we have conflict of interest laws. So um, I, I find it a, a very disturbing situation it uh perhaps um you know all of it is a big mistake somehow but the former governor really needs to come forward and explain why he decided to participate um in these events um and whether or not he knew 
that these were companies that uh, his own uh, business was involved in, um, and uh, whether he thinks there was nothing wrong with what he did or whether he regrets not having recused himself from these proceedings. And I'm happy to yield back. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Attorney General Frosch. Um, we did have to lose Comptroller Learman, um, but we do have a, some time for questions. If folks want to raise their hands, um, I can allow um, you to talk through Zoom. Um, I see we have somebody already. Um, Scott from WJLA, I'm going to uh, allow you to talk in a second. All right, you should be unmuted or you should be able to, to speak. It looks like Scott's muted still. Does anyone else have any questions while we, we wait for Scott? He may have to unmute himself. Yeah, I'm going to move um, to Tom Fitzgerald um, and we'll go back to Scott. All right, Tom, you are um, able to, to ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Excellent. Uh, Congressman, uh, former Attorney General, good to see you. Uh, did Larry Hogan break the law? It, it, it appears that he did. I mean, the law requires him to recuse himself from uh, conflicts of interest. And he clearly had conflicts of interest. Um, there, as, as Congressman Raskin said, maybe there's some excuse. But on the surface of it, it seems very clear that he violated the ethics law. Yeah, I mean, and this is what's so puzzling to me, Tom. I mean, I, as I take it, Governor Hogan made the deliberate decision not to divest himself from his business. Um, in other words, not to sell it, um, not even to put it into a blind trust, but to continue to participate in it. And I believe that he did continue to participate in it actively. So obviously it's an objective test whether there's a conflict of interest. Would a reasonable person see this as a conflict of interest? As the former attorney general was just saying, um, it's hard to escape that. But of course, it, the public should hear from Larry Hogan himself. I mean, perhaps he thought that the Hogan business was no longer representing these clients. Perhaps he thought they had somehow ceased to do business together. I don't know. In other words, I don't want to prejudge it without hearing his side of the story, but it does not look good at all. If I could just ask a follow-up, should the Attorney General Anthony Brown open up an investigation to a possible prosecution here? What do you want to see come of this? I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to be in the business of uh, telling people to open a criminal investigation. I, I can say that it looks to me as if he violated the Maryland ethics law. It's conceivable that there's an ex explanation for it, but based on what his office responded to the article. It doesn't look like he has one. And if I could just add one thing to this, um, you know, I was a state senator for 10 years and Maryland has a meticulous ethics regime and policy, which Attorney General Frosch knows real well. Um, people who are elected officials in the state understand of our very intense conflict of interest rules. Governor Moore, I believe, has recused himself uh, from voting on the Board of Public Works because of potential conflicts. I think that um, that Brooke Learman herself uh, had recused because of a potential appearance of a conflict relating uh, to her husband. So there's nothing unusual about people recusing. What's unusual to me is the idea that a public official wouldn't recuse when there's such a glaring uh, conflict of interest staring everybody in the face once the facts are known. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Does anybody else have any questions? All right, going once, going twice. All right, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you. Thanks everyone.